Hi, my name is Matt and I'm building a sop with camel. Uh, this video is fairly shortish, uh, just a quick catch up on what I've been getting up to over the last couple of weeks. It's been hampered a bit by the fact I've been building a deck as well, and that's taken up most of my days and evenings. So, but that's pretty much out of the way now, I've just got a couple of little finicky jobs finished on that, then I'm back into this. Uh, what have I done? Uh, I've found a problem with the, the trading edge uh, web rib, sorted that out. Uh, in the process, now having to remake the lightning hole jig for the trading edge web rib. Um, it's one of those cases where you check, check your measurements twice, three times, inevitably you, you miss something, discover it when you try to assemble it with another piece. I, I, I foresee a lot of that in my future. Uh, so it's not something to get upset about, it's just, eh, it happens. You fix the problem, you move on. Uh, this here is the timber I've got, about to start getting ready for uh, recreating my lighting hole template for those training edge whips, whip ribs. Uh, this is this is where I've got to so far with that uh, but I can't use this one because I changed the dimensions here uh, in particular I shaved off the bottom uh, and now the now I've got to redo that, that jig. So just that So that's that, I've re-stacked re, re the stack of timber, so that now takes up less room and I've got more space in the shed. Uh, and I've also restacked timber within the shed as well, to make better use of the space I've got and to try and make sure I've got fillets of wood between all the drying timber. Uh, the timber's pretty much dry, it's there or thereabouts. Um, but I'm getting cracks still on the front faces and sometimes down the length of the timber at this point. That's all part of that whole issue of moving from Wellington um, to here, where the climate is radically different. Radically different. Uh, we're still paying the price for that. One of the pieces of timber I pulled out of the stack yesterday when I restacked it uh, has now got a large twist. Fortunately, it's builder's timber, so I don't care. Uh, but one of the jobs for today was to will be to break that down to firewood so I can get it out of the shed and turn to something more useful. So that's pretty much the update. Uh, enjoy the video and I'll see you again at the end. That's 14 centre ribs all done, ready to go. Uh, beside them with the orange marking are three centre ribs I can't use. I don't know what I'll do with those, possibly mount them on a board or something and give them away as presents. Um, entire wing rib mounted on a wall would look pretty cool. Been a bit concerned this week that my table saw is giving up the ghost. Uh, I've turned it over, checked out all sides to try and figure out what might be causing it to overheat more often, uh, and eventually pulled out pulled out this. Now this is a battery table saw, uh, and I've got a permanent lead attached to the mains, which ends in this particular unit. And what I've discovered is. Prior to moving here, I, this, was, this was constantly on the move, um, constantly being shifted around. Now that it's settled in one spot here, all those vent holes you can see on the side there, were all clogged up the sawdust. The same on the other side. And that was basically the cause of my problems. Not enough ventilation getting into this particular transformer unit, and this was the bit that was overheating, not the motor. So with those being cleared, uh, it now works a lot, lot better. And I'm now thinking that the uh, 10 blades I went through, thinking my blades were going blunt, blunt faster, uh, are probably still good. So, yeah. Down to 13 large sticks. I'll try and knock those out over the next few weeks. Uh, and I've got to restack the stack as well. Try and create some more garage space. Uh, probably happen over Christmas. It's a nice quiet activity. Uh, I'll try and disturb the neighbours, unlike using a table saw. It's a pretty hot day here in New Zealand. Um, beautiful summer weather and I'm in the garage where it's sweltering along with my timber. Uh, I'm currently planning, carrying on with the practice planning and I've moved on to practicing on my uh, mock-up of a rear spar and I'm actually quite pleased with the shavings. This is fundamentally boring but uh, I'm really pleased with the shavings I'm getting out with a newly honed plane and some extra, a few skills. <laughs> so I just wanted to show that. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty
pretty it's pretty awesome um, it's not the tire width because my plane's not as wide as this piece of timber uh, one thing I found though is I've got to angle the plane in order to get it on both edges if I just go straight down the center I start carving out a divot in the middle so by angling it I'm getting both edges and straight across uh, while ending up with straight straight surface Beautiful. Next question is how long does sharpening last? And I don't have the answer to that yet. But I'm pretty stoked with that. <laughs> That's pretty immense. I can see me doing that across the entire length of a spar. That's quite exciting. Uh, I know, it's a bit random and stuff, but yeah. Small things. I've got a pl bit of planning to do. I've, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a pencil line there and one on the other side and one on both ends that I've got to get down to. And you can faintly see that pencil line at the top. That's what I'm working down to. So I'm taking thinner, thinner shavings now. I'm really pleased. It's remarkably parallel, which I guess is what a plane's for. And the only thing I've had to worry about is uh, whether it dishes or humps in the middle. Uh, and I think I'm being fairly careful with that. And the lines on either end are telling me that it's working okay. So I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to get to the pencil line, or maybe just above it. Then I'll start checking with the calipers. Because I really don't want to go under. So we'll see how that goes. It's still frickin' hot. Um, this is where I've got to at the moment. So the bottom edge needs planing. Uh, I've got to whip off and build a deck, unfortunately. So I've got to put this on hold for, a, for the rest of the afternoon. I'll probably get back to it tonight with a bit of luck. Uh, what I found is I had to plane the sides. When I went back inside to check the dimensions, I figured out I need to plane the sides, uh, get the parallel sides figured out first, and then I get accurate measurements for the top and the bottom. Uh, so I planed one side of the parallel side, then doubled the measurement, which is 27mm, uh, and made sure that the second side was 54mm thick piece of timber side to side. Uh, then measured from the centre line to the top, for the both corners and plane those to those corners and it, get it flat and for the bottom I'll measure from the top corner to the bottom corner on each side and get those right so fingers crossed that I'll end up with a short but accurate piece of spar cool back from building a deck and I've been planing away I'm quite happy with the planing I'm getting there and I've got a big pile of chips I've got to clear away. Uh, my wife wants them for a project, so she can have them. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is where I'm at to with this. So, a bit of luck, you can see the measurements on the end. And I've got leaning up against it the um, center web and also the training edge web. And I don't know if you can tell from here, but what I'm interested in at the moment is the is the height, and I'm trying to get this down to a level, between that and this, which should be 1 16th of an inch, and that and this, which should be 1 16th of an inch. That's clearly a bit more, probably twice that, which means I've got a measurement out somewhere. And it's either in the trailing edge, or it's here. So, I'm going inside. I'm going to have another cold cider. It's a hard, day, hard daylight today. Uh, and I'm going to check my measurements and see which one might be out. You can see there the trading edge web rib, and it's now sitting about right at the top. And what I found is this vertical dimension on the web rib was out by um, about a 1 32nd of a degree or something. It was quite, quite small. Uh, so I changed the template I used for making these, rerouted all of my tail webs, which is that stack there. Uh, and also had a go at uh, using my new lightning hole template to route out the lightning holes. Uh, in the process, uh, because I basically developed that whilst this was oversized, in the process found it's not going to work, so I need to restart that. I've got a new table. Managed to acquire that off, uh, off a friend. A little bit more sturdy. It's now got uh, spruce cross braces on it. Give it a bit more stability, it's quite solid now. Also, restack my timber. 
so all the builders timber is at the bottom and I've struck in such a way that I've got uh, basically shelves in the bottom there as well for the longer lengths uh, when I took all this out I had an option to measure it up and I've got about two and a half meters of timber cubic meters of timber sitting in the stack uh, along with what's sitting in these racks so there got two racks full there that's all builders timber long lengths of it uh, racks there capping strips and half inch square timber uh, and smaller timber down the bottom the bottom shelf is again builders timber so my pick is I've cut out about two to two and a half cubic meters of timber out of six cubic meters to start with and it's taken about a year to do so uh, where I'm at at the moment with the cutting is I'm thinking I'll probably leave that these last pieces probably till winter uh, the concern at the moment is, um, I keep changing my mind of course, but the concern at the moment is around the splits. And I want to see this stabilise a little bit first. Hope to get through winter, uh, get it solidly dry throughout, and then cut it up. Uh, while restacking, came across this piece, which is, I can't quite tell in this video, but fundamentally that's all warped. It's twisted around that way. Uh, so I'm going to cut that up for firewood. Pile of firewood from a four and a half meter beam of spruce timber. Uh, this beam had quite a quite a twist in it; it wasn't worth keeping. And what I've found in previous ones is where you've got um, the core of the tree, it tends to twist around that. And you can see the core of the tree in several of these rings. If you look closely. So yep, so they'll be burnt over this winter. So this piece I was cutting out for the front spar. Right background, that doesn't help. Cool. The shape's about right, uh, but because of the splits I had coming the top, trying to plane those out, uh, I end up bringing this down too thin. So I've re-added this to the stack of timber and I'll find another use for it somewhere. Um, and I'll just need to find another piece of timber to to mock up the front spar placed in my existing rib jig so I've got the front ply web here spar, centre ply moving further down the rear spar I cut earlier and the tail rib going to the end so that's all looking pretty good I still have to cut the oops, got past it. Problem in looking at the screen. Uh, I've still got to cut the nose rib, which fits in there. And somewhere around, I probably won't have to remake it. I have a wooden piece that goes in there, which represents the AP121 uh, tubing that goes around the, the trailing edge of the wing. But looking through all this, it's looking pretty solid, looking pretty darn good. Everything looks consistent with this jig will be usable in the end, I don't know, but um, every, all, the, all the measurements look consistent and everything seems to be pretty flat and sitting there quite naturally, which is really nice. I'm quite pleased with this. These are my two spar mock-ups. So I've got the rear rib here and that's the front rib. So I obviously did this one a little bit earlier. Uh, and my method for creating these is slowly getting more and more refined. Uh, what I've taken to doing is one side on the jointer, manually plane the other side to get it flat. I could possibly put it through the planer, uh, but I'm still practicing my, my hand planing at the moment. Uh, so currently this side on the jointer, that side by hand plane to make it flat, uh, then planing this side to the correct dimensions based off measuring off that center line and then measuring from this corner to that corner to get that entire width correct and same here you can't really measure from this here to here and there to there because the centre line is too thick and it's too inaccurate to try and remember where you measured on that centre line so you're better off treating that as the level to measure these two and then just taking the dimensions from there to there 
that, that should give you that correct and that correct. Then hand planing these to the correct dimensions. Lots of caliper work involved as well. Uh, the next stage is to, I'm currently waiting on a one inch router bit, should be coming in the post in the next few days, uh, and that'll give me the half inch radius I need to cut into here. And do that both sides, that'll create an I beam out of timber, and the same on this one. And that will involve creating more jigs to be able to do that accurately. So looking pretty good. It's a side view of the two. Not very long, but should be long enough for what I need. What I'm hoping is when I finally decide on what my uh, rib jig is going to look like, is I'll shave a piece off the edge of both of them, and I'll mount that permanent, permanently into the rib jig, and that should still give me enough that I can do destructive testing of a rib held on these two parts. And we'll see how that goes. This is an old tool I picked up ages ago as a shed ornament. It's a 22 inch jointer, uh, by which I mean it's 22 inches along the base, and you use it for planing edges of timber flat so you can then glue them together. It's ideal for creating long flat lengths which is exactly what I need for 4 meter length spars. It works, uh, I've actually used it uh, recently, uh, I've since stopped using it because I've got the standing number 5 now, but I'm going to end up using this for doing spar work. Uh, I haven't tried sharpening the blade yet, but that should sharpen up quite nicely. This looks awkward it is, but we're getting there, we're getting towards finishing off rips. So we've got the three pieces pretty much done. I've just got to sort out the lightning holes for the trading edge rib. And that'll be those sorted. I've got spar mock-ups done for front and rear. Uh, I've just got to find or create a nose rib uh, for the nose and a trading edge piece. And after that, I think we're on to looking at capping strips. Um, I can see the end is getting there. Glad to put that down. Um, hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, if you are, like and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you next week.